okay hello and welcome back to the channel so i wasn't able to record for the past few weeks because of the amount of work that i had to do in my you know daily life but we are back discussing shaders in godot and today i wanted to talk to you more about Godot shading language. First thing that I would like to discuss is the variables and data types. You see in GDScript or even in C Sharp, typically what we can do is to create um, a variable by using var item, which is just a short for variable and then either assign some value or hope that uh, the uh, type of this variable is gonna get inferred uh, this uh, means specifically for c sharp because um, the gd script is like uh, more loose when it comes to typing when we try to define uh, the variable like that in gd script or in sorry Godot scripting language what we get is of course red line indicating an error this is due to the fact that Godot shading language is strongly typed and requires us to specify uh, the type of the value that we would like to create so as with most of the engines we can split it into two parts first is the declaration of the variable and then initialization and again because this is strongly typed language we need to start with specifying the type for example int which would indicate integer uh, value right and if i would write this like this this is going to be correct expression in um, in Godot shading language uh, as this is the declaration of the variable without its initialization. I could of course do both in one line. So here I can combine the declaration which is the type of the name and assign the value at the very start which is initialization. And then this again can be split in two lines because I can reuse that variable and do declaration first and then initialization. And of course, uh, all of these uh, values, uh, all of those variables are mutable. So I can reassign the value to the variable. Okay, so we have um, declaration, initialization, declaration and initialization in one line and then reassigning the value. Of course, since this is strictly typed language, I cannot assign incorrect data type to that value. Here we indicated that this is integer, so assigning a string here would be incorrect. Or even if I do it like, I believe, right, this is going to be uh, treated as a, as a, even I cannot use string here, but if I try to assign, let's say, true, which is Boolean, invalid arguments to, to operator, right? This means uh, this was declared as an integer and now I'm trying to assign true or false here. So let's quickly go through the most obvious, and most usable data types. We have integer, of course. What's more, we have unsigned integer, uh, like, I don't know, age. This just means... Uh, and that has probably has has to be casted. 
Okay. So we have integer, which is a value that can be positive or negative, and then unsigned integer, which is only a positive value. And I can just say, if I try something like this, right, invite assignment of int to u int, right? So I cannot uh, get um, negative values here. And this basically has to do with the range or space you have in a memory. If we do an int, it goes plus and minus, and I believe this is something around 42,000 or something. This only uh, this is only connected to the amount of a memory that variable takes. But uh, I'm not sure about that number really. And then if we go with unsigned int, it means that the possible value starts at zero and go to 64k. Again, not completely sure about that number, but this just moves the negative range into the direction of the positive value. Okay. The other important uh, data type is, of course, float, which is, for example, I don't know, uh, we can do like alpha, and then it can have decimal bases, right? And in case of um, float, now this goes to positive and negative two. Oops, sorry. Alpha. I'm not sure you don't have U float. Okay. Uh, then you can have booleans, which is. We know this very good from GDScript. So we will be working mostly with those. There are also others. There are matrices and arrays but they deserve their separate episode to be honest other thing that is remember uh, that you would like to remember is that these values can be casted meaning you can uh, specify the type when assigning the value uh, one issue we had with this uh, you already saw if i try to do something like i don't know health is equal to 20 I will get information that int cannot be assigned to u int, right? And this is because the compiler doesn't know whether uh, I created this type of data, which is u int, but then 20 is also in that range. So the compiler gets confused. Is it integer? Even though I want to assign it to u int. So what I can do is just to make sure that we're using the correct type is cast it by using a constructor. So just use the um, the data type name and the parentheses and put the value inside. Then uh, again, mm, there can be problem, for example, when transferring from floats to ints. Uh, I might want to do something like, I don't know, something like that. And that's going to, again, give me the very same problem. I uh, mean that the float value, which is here, uh, and you can tell by the dot and the decimal places, can be assigned to u integer. But I can cast it to integer like that. And it's going to get interpreted correctly. And as you might imagine, the decimal places, uh, they're going to get dropped, right? So this is now just free. Okay. So this is like casting values to another data type. Uh, there's another thing, uh, as you can see, uh, there's something that we know uh, as a scope which means that the values only exist in the uh, block that we have inside of a, our function, to put it simply. 
but what if you'd like to use that value globally and move it uh, into the like module or file scope to use both in vertex and fragment function well if i try to do that i'm gonna uh, get an error meaning that global non-constant variables are not supported meaning that if i want to have um global variable for that shader here it can be the one that can get uh, modified like for example here using more points right this isn't correct if i want to have this and use it across main functions it has to be a true constant meaning it gets its value assigned just once and then cannot be mutated after so if i add cons here it's now okay but what i cannot do is use more points and assign a new value here right since this is cons reassigning a value is not correct okay so maybe let's take a look how this all um connects into the uh shader graph right now well this is pretty simple because I can search for uh, uh, scalar values and uh, for example if I search for int here I oh here I have int constant int parameter uh, so if I do int, con int constants I can just assign a value here the same would go for a float constant and of course, Boolean constants, right? And since they are all constants, meaning that uh, you can see that they do not have like the entry point here. They are just assigned once. So they're more like these constants, right? The value gets assigned once and then you can use it. On the other hand, there's something called a parameter, right? And I can tell that, for example, is turned on. And then if I actually use it, uh, where is it? This is using GG shader. Let's switch to using this. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, resource. So if I actually use this parameter somehow, now I get this shader parameters, which can be accessed via code or it can be turned on in inspector. And we'll learn more uh, more about parameters and uniforms in the upcoming lessons. But remember that there's a way to control your shaders, uh, either via code or uh, via uh, the uh, editor setting or inspector settings. Okay, so this is it. This is how we can create different types of constants uh, and variables, whether this is via code or in the shader graph. So the next thing I wanted to discuss with you uh, are the vectors. And we know them pretty well uh, from the GD script. Uh, the difference here is that uh, the syntax is a little bit different. So what we have is vector two, vector four, and vector three. These are like the most important right and they by default are considered to have uh float values and you can see that uh expected identifier so let's do back to i don't know speed okay and the same as the variables, the vectors that here, of course, we have x, 
and Y, they come with their own data types. So I can do B vector two. Um, let's call this flags. And then I can specify, as you can see, Boolean vari variables here. True and true. And then of course, E vector two, I vector two, for example, I don't know, um, directions. And let's just add semicolons because this is required. Okay, so here's the uh, most typical vector for the floats and then B vector and I vector are uh, for booleans and integers. So if we take a look at the possibilities, this just means how many uh, how many slots in our vector do we require, right? So vector two will be X and Y. The vector three would be, of course, X, Y, and Z. And vector four for something like a color is X, Y, Z, W. But also, since they're used both for things like transformation and colors, we will often use R, G, B. And R, G, B, A. And you will see those being used interchangeably depending mostly on the context. So let's talk a little bit about uh, vectors uh when it comes to reading the values from them what you could do is just say speed as you can see we have here g and uh r and also x and y and as i can uh, as you can probably tell speed y is the same as speed r g right So if, uh, if I were to create a vector four and call this color, or even I have one right here, I can say color X, color Y, and also R, G, B, A. And let's get rid of that and assign this to some custom um, vector. Let's call this color A. I can tell this what properties do we have here, right? So you have A, um, B, G, B. Also, there's uh, another notation to a vector, and I believe this is uh, you can do X. Y, Z, W, you could do R, G, B, A, and you could do S, uh, let me don't get S, T, P, Q. This is another notation. But throughout this course, you will mostly see me use X, Y, Z, W, or R, G, B, A. And with that, we come to a vector combination. So, if I have a vector two here and I would like to create vector four, let's say this um, random vector, I could use uh, this vector two partially in creation of vector four because it's all nice, simple math here. So let me explain this to you. Vector four can be created, of course, as a set of four values. But then vector two can be, of course, created as a two values. It's all about 
the amount of space. So knowing that I can create vector four by using vector two and two other values because this takes two places. So this is also treated as, as X and Y. Or I can create vector four by using two different vector twos. So if I go here, I can say that vector four is equal to 10 and 20 and speed. And it should all make sense. Uh, expect, oh, of course, I need a constructor. Right? And then I can create another vector by saying this is vector four, like that. So if this is true, it only makes sense for me to create vector three by using vector three constructor with speed and a value. And as you can probably tell, I can place it anywhere. Uh, and we need a colon and we need a type. So I can create vectors by just combining vectors of a lower amount of uh, space to create a bigger vector. But this also goes uh, in a kind of different direction by using um, the constructor, the, the composing and decomposing or swizzling. So what is swizzling? If uh, I want to create a vector two, let's call this X for now. I could use constructor like this. I can take vector three, which is bigger than vector two and say, well, to create vector two, use Y and Z values from vector three. So I can just say vector three, Y, Z and colon. So I can read those values as I want. I can also probably say ZZ. And now the value of that would be 70 and 70. So here it would be 70, 70, because the Z value here is 70. Okay. Um, to give you another example, uh, I can say that vector three values X and Y are equal to random vector. And I can say R and alpha. And it still compiles correctly, meaning that for that vector, its two first values should be set to this vector first value and the last value because it's of course RGBA, okay? But if I try something like this, as you can see, this is not possible because here on that um, part of the expression, we have vector two because we're taking X and Y and on this part, we have RGBA, which is vector four. So they do not match when it comes to the amount of spaces. So this is swizzling for you or decomposing and composing, right? Let's take a look how this works in the uh, shader editor. I mean, shader graph uh, here. Okay. So of course, if we add a node, we have a possibility to create 
let's see uh, vector uh, where is it vector to constant or vector for constant and as you can see I can click that arrow here to get into composing decomposing part so to get access to basically um, any single value in the vector and here they are uh, they're called just RGB in this case also we are using colors All right so I can provide some values here And now, if I want to use those values to create new vector, I can use compose. And if I want to create vector two, I can take any value that I need. And here, as the output, I will get a vector that has 20 and 300. 67 right so this is kind of like swizzling using other vectors and their values to create different vector uh, again if i want to compose for example vector 3 and i can use x of that vector 2 in both values and for example uh, i can get any value like green from here to create new vector as an output so this is composing the vectors and then there's also decomposing the vector and let's do vector free decompose okay so this is quite different because here the input is a vector and here i get as an output set of values right we can collapse that we can collapse that oh and it gets unplugged right because uh the types no longer match so something to to remember about so if i get like two three and four here as a starting values and this creates um uh vector i can decompose it back into singular values by vector decompose so to sum this up and how this works you either get vector as an input and then you can decompose it decompose to singular values x y and z or you get those singular values and you compose them back into vector and as you can see those can be combined together to create the exact vector that you need uh, let me check yeah, I believe this is all I wanted to share with you. So these are the data types, the vectors, the Swiss link or composing and decomposing presented both in GD shader language and in our wonderful shader graph. Uh, I hope you like that. Uh, I'm going on a vacation for a week and then we'll continue with more information about uh, shaders and uh, shading language. So. Thank you for that. See you and take care.